Hello, I'm Drake. Welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss occult and metaphysical knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible results and change in your life. This week, we're going to be talking about the differences between dragon magic and draconian magic, so stay tuned. Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about the differences between dragon magic and draconian magic. Um, I've actually been getting a lot of uh, emails on this particular question ever since we did the dragon magic series, and it is, it's even come up a time or two in the live streams that we do every Fridays. Um, and I want to go ahead and say they are not the same path or practice. They do differ. Now, with that said, I practice dragon magic. That's where my know-how is. That's where my knowledge base is. And for all the different types of magic that I've studied, researched, and utilized in my practice, at the end of the day, dragon magic is always going to be my foundation, and it's going to be the area I'm most knowledgeable. I say that because draconian magic, though I have utilized it a few times, I am not an expert on it. So I can only touch on what I know are the drastic differences between the two in this video. So first off, what is draconian magic? Well, draconian magic is a system of magic that utilizes dragons and serpents as symbols. They don't directly work with dragons the way we do in dragon magic. On top of that, they also work with deities such as Lucifer, Lilith, um, Samuel, and Belial as well. And I'm sure they work with many, many other deities. In fact, they're listed. Um, the book that I got on the topic when I realized there was a path out there that I'd even stumbled across a time or two and it was much larger than I thought, was the Draconian Magic Ritual Book. Um, it was written by Asenoth Mason, and honestly, if you're interested in studying more on the Draconian Path, I would recommend this book. Um, I'll make sure there's a link to it below. Uh, I'm not getting paid to plug this book at all, but I'm only actually recommending it because I do find it to be a good book. In fact, one of the things that I loved about it, not only does it describe the tradition, the symbolism, and how one goes about practicing, but it's not a step-by-step how-to practice because they encourage the magician to customize their draconian practice to their selves and their workings. And there's very few books out there that give the foundational information but let you put it together as you see fit. So I found that fascinating about this book. And it goes into a lot of topics, a lot. It's, um, it was a fascinating read. So, yeah, if you're wanting to go deeper than we do on this video concerning Draconian Magic, this is the best book I've found. There's probably more out there, but for right now, this is the best one I have found. Now, that said, any Draconian practitioners out there who happen to see this. Um, I hope I do not do you all any ill and screw this up at all. I'm just trying to show that there is a difference between dragon magic and draconian magic. And anything I do get mixed up on or anything, feel free to shoot me a comment um, below or message me. Let me know. I'm learning. I'm always learning. Love to learn. So uh, I mean no offense if I mess anything up. I'm doing my best here. That said, um, one of the concepts that I've run into with Draconian Magic is it does seem very focused on raising oneself up or ascension to God form. And it is very much, um, or at least appears to me, very much a left-hand path practice, which I have no problem with. Um, I find self-empowerment over divine empowerment quite a good idea in most cases. Um, that said, 
The places where I've encountered draconian magic has definitely been working with the Clifothic um, tree. And in a path working I did last year and one that those who follow the live stream know that I'm actually working through this year. It was written in a draconian style and in fact both path workings recommend this book. So that is my exposure to the draconian path. Um, I have heard it referred to as a Luciferian like path. I'm not sure if I can go that far. I know Lucifer is one of the entities um, shown in it, at least from the Clifothic side, so maybe. But a big theme that I have encountered is destruction to creation. Um, and what I mean by that is the path is really about tearing down the old self and rebuilding yourself into something better. Um, overcoming your limitations. So it is a very harsh path. Um, that's something I have noticed. It comes through very, very harsh. Um, but sometimes truth is harsh and sometimes facing reality is harsh. And there's not a lot of subtlety. It really does seem to be very headlong into tearing the self down, tearing the current self down. And building the self up into a much more powerful, divine-like being. Um, in a lot of ways, it reminds me of shadow work I've done in the past, though it's more hands-on, very ritualistic. Um, there is a lot of use of sex magic and blood magic throughout the process, so that's something that one should at least consider being comfortable with or be comfortable enough with it that you can find a workaround around it if you don't want to particularly use it. Now, all that said, dragon magic differs because honestly dragon magic does rely on the magician. It's very free form. It lets you kind of do as you want. It's all about balance and it is about building the magician up. But we don't in dragon magic, you don't really work with gods as any requirement, and you only are focusing on working with dragons, specifically the draconic entities, and building those relationships and learning from them to build yourself up. Now, yes, when working with chaos dragons, you could very well run into a situation where you are destroying the self in order to build yourself back up. That's in a lot of ways what chaos dragons really do but for the most part dragon magic is more elemental based and it's more focused on working with those universal powers through your friendships and allies with the dragons um, that is the sole foundation and focus of dragon magic now those relationships with the dragons they can go to other places and work with other entities you're not cut off from those. But in Draconian magic, they don't work with dragons at all that I can tell. Um, in this book, the only two actual dragons I saw mentioned um, in any format is Leviathan, which most people don't actually consider a dragon. Some people consider Leviathan a demon. And Tiamat, which again... Some people view Tiamat as just a goddess. I've even seen Tiamat listed as a god a time or two. Um, and it is true, many people view that deity as a dragon, but not always. Those are the two closest references to dragons that I have found in draconian practice. Um, beyond that, it's the symbolism of the serpent, the rebirth of the serpent, um, the cycle of a serpent, life, death, that old, old symbolism of a serpent runs very heavy through the Draconian practice. Um, they also do a lot with Kundalini energy and seeing the two serpents rising around the center of the core energy or spine, um, as a lot of people visualize it, as being serpents or dragons and Due to, that symbolism, due to that symbolism, they do tend to use Kundalini a lot in their meditations and in 
and in their ritual work. So the two practices are not the same. Um, I can't say one's better than the other. I never say that of any practice. I've spoken with a few practitioners who do follow the draconian path and can't say we've ever just sat down and hashed out the differences between their practice and mine. And that's largely because anytime we sit down to discuss it, um, we're able to have such an open discussion with what they're working on, what we're working on, um, my advice to them or theirs to me, and the discussion is pleasant. So it's never come up as to why one of us might believe one thing or the other. Um, and I've noticed also that draconian magic is very gnosis based. It's about personal gnosis, personal experience. You got to dive in, you got to experience it. And I would say magic should be that way. Um, my, I know my practice in dragon magic has definitely been that way, but they do put a heavy focus on that experience and your personal experience and that's good anyways um i did want to go ahead and clear up the question of whether or not draconian magic and dragon magic were the same which they are um they are not they are two different paths and i know with the names and all that it can get confusing anyways if you are interested in draconian magic and learning more about it i do again recommend the book Dr draconian ritual book by Asanoff Mason. Fantastic little read. Um, and I'll make sure there's a link to it below. Anyways, uh, I feel like I'm rambling, so I'll go ahead and close. Uh, be sure to join us Friday nights at 8 p.m. here on YouTube, where we do research and ramblings. It's a live stream where I talk about what I've got going on, what I've been doing in my own personal practice, some of the, my findings. And I also take questions from viewers. Um, sometimes we don't even get around to talking about me. It just ends up being a good discussion amongst everyone in the chat room, which is absolutely great. I love it. Um, I got to say, I've been loving the live streams and being able to interact directly with you all. Also, join us Sundays at 8 p.m. over on Twitch for the Magical Coffee Hour with me and the Linda from Caffeine and Chaos where we discuss magic um, and in pop culture and how they got some things right, what they didn't get right. And again, we take viewer questions live right there during the show. And I'll make sure there's a link for that below as well. If you have any questions or just want to say hi, drop us a comment below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified anytime we release a new video or we go live for a live stream. Anyways, I'm Drake. This has been Working Dragon Mystic, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.